All right, so we're going to start our third lesson in C++ programming. And in this lesson, we're actually going to be creating a program. Uh, you'll see what this little guy here is about in a minute. Uh, but let's get started. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to actually create our first program. We're going to step through the code uh, line by line. Um, I'm going to kind of tell you what's going on with the code and everything like that. Well, we're going to learn the basic syntax of C++, just some of the basics. And then I'm going to go over something that's really kind of near and dear to my heart, and that is about formatting uh, your source code. There's no rules saying you have to format your, your source code. Uh, Visual Studio is not going to make you uh, format your source code. Uh, but it is a nice thing to do, and we'll look at why here in a second. All right. The, the program we're going to be creating is going to do the following. It's going to display the text to the screen. It's going to display some text to the screen. And the text it's going to display is, The zombies have risen. Get your weapons and follow me. So this is the output, and once we know what the output is supposed to look like, we can create our source code and kind of make our source code output that to the screen. All right, let's make the code. What I've done here is I've fired up Visual Studio, and I've created a project called Zombies, and I have added a source code file to this called Rising Zombies. Uh, we went over how to do this in the last lesson, uh, so if you don't remember, Maybe you can uh, look back at the last lesson lesson before we continue. The first thing I'm going to show you guys is from last lesson, getting the output panel back. The output panel was on the bottom. We really couldn't find a way to get it back. I did some additional research and found out that it's not on the view menu. Microsoft didn't put it on the view menu uh, in the Express Edition. Why? I have no idea. To get the Outlook panel back, <clears throat> to get the Outlook panel back, you press Control, Alternate, O, and the Output panel comes back. Okay. Now, if your Output panel comes back like, uh, what is it, this here, or just this here, we know what to do, right? We just move it around. There you go. If it comes up like that, uh, like that, then just move it around, and you can move it to where it only takes up the appropriate amount of the screen. Uh, another thing I'm going to do for display purposes is I'm going to bump the, my font size up to about 150% is generally good. I'm going to press the enter key once and then I'm going to start off with a comment. All right, A comment is something that, that the compiler is going to ignore. Uh, comments are kind of like internal documentation to our code to tell other people or us if we come back to this at a later time exactly what our code was supposed to be doing. Okay, I'm going to show you how to make a multi-line comment. A multi-line comment starts with a forward slash and an asterisk. All right, and then I can type anything I want to. I'm going to go down to the next line and I'm going to tab over and I'm going to say this is my first zombie program. Enter. I am creating this in Visual C++ 2010. my name and the date. Now to end my multi-line comment I'm going to put an asterisk and a forward slash and I'm going to use the backspace key. I'm going to kind of clean this up a little bit here and this kind of goes back to that formatting code thing I was talking about. Uh, you notice how this is nice and clear. You can tell uh, what's supposed to end where and what's contained within what just in this little comment. Uh, we also see here one of the great features of Visual Studio and that is the fact that it color codes my source code. So all of my comments are going to be in green whether it's a multi-line comment like we have here or whether it's a single line comment and I'll show you how to do single line comments in a minute. So I'm gonna press the enter key a couple more times and I'm gonna put pound 
include or hashtag whatever you want to call it and then I am going to say iOS stream okay now the pound include means that I want to include certain functionality within my program the functionality I want to include is in the iOS stream header file and the IO stream header file allows me to include input and output functionality in my program because there has to be a way to display that text to the screen and using this header file or this library allows me to do that so I don't have to create that code myself it's already done for me I'm gonna press the enter key two more times and I'm gonna type the following line int main go and then what this is is the keyword int anytime you see a word in blue it's a keyword a keyword means you cannot use it as a variable name which we'll discuss later uh, so that's the main thing about a keyword is you can't use it any for any other purpose than which it was intended alright int is short for integer or whole number. An integer is a whole number, no decimal place. The main function, we call this the main function, Ooh, let me put that back there, here we go, we call this the main function, alright, uh, every C++ program has to have a main function. I know this is a function because of the open and close parentheses after the word main okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the enter key and I'm gonna put a open curly brace and then I'm gonna go down four or five lines and I'm gonna put a close curly brace everything within my main function has to be encapsulated between these two curly braces the reason I put the close curly brace at, in there at this point in time is uh, so I don't forget later on and then you go to compile your code and you get all sorts of problems and everything like that so let me see here I am gonna put std colon colon c out now std is standard library the two colons you see here is called the scope resolution operator okay and I can put a comment in here about that there we go is the scope resolution operator and what that does is it tells the compiler which library to get the C out function from okay now with the C out function I have to use two less than symbols okay and I'm gonna put quotation marks the zombies have risen alright you'll see a lot of red squiggly lines that go away when you do certain things and stuff like that that's fine don't worry about the red lines uh, until after you press the enter key if you press the enter key and to go down to the next line and there's still red stuff up there you really want to worry about that alright now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in std colon colon end l go oh I forgot something here you see how I said red okay I gotta put the two less than symbols there as well. Alright? And the inline function, what the inline function does is it's the same thing as an actual human pressing the inner key. It's called a carriage return. Okay? Now, one critical thing in C. I'm done with this line of code. Alright? Every time I'm done with a line of code, I put a semicolon and that tells the compiler that that is the end of this line of code. I'm going to press enter there and I'm going to type in some more. I'm going to type in that next uh, line of code that we saw in the uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, if you'll notice when I start typing I, I type std colon colon and then I, type, I start typing c out. All right, And then this list comes up here right this list is called IntelliSense and IntelliSense is the greatest thing ever invented really by Microsoft okay it 
tries to auto-complete what you're doing for you and it really cuts down on your time it cuts down on the possibility of uh, you making a mistake a typo or something like that maybe not with something as simple as C out but later on you know we got like current underscore exception uh, you know is current exception is it one word is it two words with an underscore well IntelliSense will tell you Alright, and you'll notice that all the text that I want displayed to the screen is in quotation marks. Okay, we call these strings. Okay, anytime you see something in quotation marks, it's called a literal string. And the reason it's called a literal string is because it will literally print or display to the screen what's in the quotation marks. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in another command. This is called system, and I'm going to put pause in quotation marks. There we go. And my semicolon. Don't forget your semicolon, guys. All right. And then after that, I am going to put return zero. And what this does, what return does, is it returns me to the beginning of my function, so to speak. All right. And when I say return zero, remember how I said integer is a whole number, right? Well, I'm just returning zero to my main function, and this just tells the program that it terminated normally, all right? It didn't terminate abnormally or anything like that. I can kind of clean my code up a little bit here. There we go. Maybe get these guys in here. You can select a whole block of text and tab it if you want to do it like that maybe make it a little bit neater uh, you'll see some people in some books do this uh, they'll put their open curly brace here um, yeah I really don't like that uh, let's not do that let's keep our curly braces down with uh, you know everything else you'll notice that Visual Studio every time you click and select a uh, here we go. You get to the left of a curly brace, it highlights the next one for you, or it's closing curly brace, or what it thinks is it's curling bra curly brace. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this green arrow, or click on this green arrow here, or you can press the F5 key on your keyboard. Go. It says this project is out of date. Would you like to build it? Well, yeah. There we go. And it's building it in the output window for me. All right. Great job. We got exactly what we wanted to get. The zombies have risen. Get your weapons and follow me. It says press any key to continue. Uh, that's a result of the system pause command here. Uh, if I didn't have that here, let me show you what happens if you don't have that. I'm going to comment this line out. Uh, remember, comments are ignored by the compiler. So if you're ever testing your code, we don't delete our code, we comment it out. Uh, this is what happens. And boom, it flashes on the screen so fast you can't even see it. And uh, nothing. So that's why we have the system pause here. All right. Anytime you see an asterisk here, you know that you made changes to it. Uh, Visual Studio tells you, you the change you made was on this line because it's yellow. Right? If you want to save your file, click save. If you have several files open and you want to save all of them, you just click save all. There we go. And it saves those changes I made. And I'm going to run my program one more time just to make sure everything's okay with it. And there we go. All right, I guess we'll call this course from now, from here on out the walking code. Uh, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, okay. So we'll call it the walking code whenever we do our zombie projects. And I think a majority of my lessons are going to have to do with zombie projects because uh, I am a big fan of the walking dead. And, uh, well, it's my course. So what we did in this lesson, just to kind of wrap up, is, uh, yeah, let me go back one. Here we go. Is we created our first program. We stepped through the code. I kind of explained to you uh, the basic syntax of C++, and we learned about formatting code. All right, so congratulations. You made your first program. All right, wait for the next lesson.